everyone, thanks very much for logging on to this short webinar. Today I'm going to chat about equipment that we would recommend for dental radiography in your practice and also some of the pros and cons of each. Just a, a quick introduction on myself. I'm a veterinary nurse who qualified in 2009 from University College Dublin. I started my career in a mixed practice in County Galway, Ireland, where my passion for veterinary dentistry grew. I was lucky enough to be working in one of the first practices in Ireland to have IM3 dental radiography equipment. I then continued my nursing career over in the UK in a small animal practice where we converted the laundry room into a fully operational dental suite again using IM3 dental equipment. The experiences that I have gained from working in practices that have introduced dental radiography and succeeding with successful results for the patient, the client and practice revenue has made my dentistry interests grow even more. I left practice just over two years ago to work in the veterinary imaging industry and have been lucky enough to have recently joined the IM3 team, where I can hopefully spread my dental passion even further. Dental radiography is an essential diagnostic tool and veterinary dentistry cannot be performed efficiently without it. I will briefly touch on indications of dental radiography before I talk about x-ray equipment, the biggest being periodontal disease. Over 75% of patients that we see in practice have some degree of periodontal disease. Taking x-rays will help us to make a decision whether to extract the tooth or not and allow us to evaluate any periodontal pockets and the extent of bone loss that we may have missed when we've been charting and doing our probing. Pre-extraction, this is really important and there are many reasons for pre-extraction x-rays. It helps us to determine if there is any complex root anatomy. So there may be extra tooth roots, curved roots you can see here on, on this x-ray at the top. It will also show us if we've got any fusion to the alveolar bone. Um, they also provide us with information on that rostral mandible. So especially in our feline patients or our, our little petite small patients, they might be at risk of fracture while extracting those mandibular teeth. So this gives us the images then that we can show to our clients and, and gives us a chance to make a phone call if we need to. Post extraction, I certainly wouldn't recommend you need to do full mouth post extraction, but definitely if we have extracted any teeth, it'll highlight if we've got any retained tooth roots. This may delay healing and it also provides a legal document in case of any complications. Resorptive lesions. X-rays are needed to determine the type, the extent and the best treatment options available. And we do need to remember that they're not just in our feline patients. Lesions generally start at or below the gingival margin. Endodontic disease is a big one. We need to x-ray any teeth that when we've been doing our probing and charting that have complicated or uncomplicated crown fractures. And we also need to remember to image any worn teeth or any discoloured teeth. So any missing teeth, we need to think, um, are they really truly missing? When we've marked them on our chart, when we've been doing our charting, we've marked them as missing. We need to think perhaps they could be impacted. This is certainly quite common in the mandibular premolars in boxes. Or we potentially might have persistent root fra fragments that have been left over from previous dentals. We won't get to see any of these without doing dental x-ray. Retained deciduous teeth. This is also an important one. It's going to allow us to identify the root pathology. So it's going to let us see is the root still intact or is it undergoing resorption? And it's also then going to allow us to correct, to, to do the correct planning for ease of extraction, whether we need to do an open or closed extraction. And again, thinking outside the box, so not just for our, our dentals, but also we potentially might have any patients with nasal discharge or sneezing or oral trauma, we can use our intraoral imaging plates for all of these. 
To obtain dental x-rays in practice, we need the correct equipment that works most effectively and efficiently in our practice environment. The type of unit may be dictated by the amount of space that you have. Firstly, we need to buy a suitable dental intraoral generator, as a standard x-ray unit can only be used when the beam is directed vertically. In veterinary dentistry, we need to have a wide range of movement for precise positioning of the tube head that can be directed at the correct angle without the need to move the patient. If you have attempted dental x-rays with your standard x-ray generator, you will have found that this can be really time consuming and frustrating. Dental generators are available as either mobile, wall mounted or handheld solutions. To make the dental procedure flow quicker, it's great to be able to x-ray at your own designated dental table rather than having to move the patient to the x-ray room. This is preferential in veterinary dentistry. Wall mounted generators require wall space near your dental table and must have the correct electrical connection. The arms are available in different lengths and can be folded up and stored flat against the wall. The long arm can sometimes be used to access more than one dental table. The Revolution 4DC X-ray generator features the latest technology. It has the smallest focal spot for intraoral imaging of 0.4 mm, which guarantees consistently sharp images for greater detail in the bone and tooth structure. You can see the difference in the image quality above from a 0.8 mm focal spot and a 0.4 focal spot. It has a wide swivel joint so that the tube head can revolve freely around the sphere. This allows for precise placement and practically any position can be achieved, even vertical. The system is self-balancing, which reduces any risk of the tube head vibration or drift during an image acquisition. It comes with a wireless handheld remote with veterinary presets for ease of exposure. Simply select the tooth on the veterinary specific display and acquire your image. Mobile generators are effectively wall mounted generators on wheels. If you do not have space available, a mobile generator is a good option. They do, however, occupy a large space and may not be ideal for a small practice. Three components control X-ray exposure. The KV, killer voltage, which controls the degree of penetration. The MA, miller amperage, which controls the number of X-rays produced. And the seconds, which is the exposure time. Dental X-ray generators have both fixed KV and MA because there is very little variation in the tissue in the patient's mouth. Most dental generators are set to 60 or 70 kV and usually the MA range is between 2 and 8. So the only variable factor is the time and this, as we said, is measured in seconds. The dose and the image density is controlled by the MA and the exposure time. If we increase the MA, this increases the overall radiographic density which is the darkness of the image. This can be set manually, but most of the generators have presets which set the exposure based on the size of the patient and the tooth selected. Please see our exposure chart below. Please note that this exposure chart is only a guide. Distance from the X-ray cone head to the plate can affect exposure. Prior to taking an x-ray, always ensure that nobody is standing in the primary beam, even if they are wearing appropriate PPE. Never point the beam at a person or through a stud wall. If possible, stand outside the controlled area or behind a lead screen. If you do have to remain in the controlled area, you must wear the appropriate lead PPE and stand a minimum of two metres away from the tube head. All other staff members must leave the controlled area. 
Under 18s and pregnant women must never be in the controlled area. When we're taking a dental x-ray, we need to hold the button down until the beeping stops. If it's released during the exposure, it'll stop the production of x-rays and this will cause an error and the exposure will need to be repeated. X-ray generators are also available in handheld solutions. They are a little bit like oversized cameras and ideal for both dental and orthopaedic work. There is no need for installation or wall mounting for these units and they are most suited for mobile vets, zoo work or branch practices. Full PPE must be worn when operating a handheld generator. My personal opinion for these generators is for training beginners can be somewhat challenging to master the orientation of the beam while holding the unit. Equally, if there is a need to retake an image, you're in danger of repeating your mistake again as you can't remember the exact position for the previous x-ray. The Portex is nice and light low and only weighs one and a half kilo, which enables total portability. It has built-in safety features including a lead-lined tank, tube, and is also supplied with a backscatter shield. It comes with a tripod, so you have the option of a remote operating switch. As with the mobile and wall-mounted generators, this can be used with both DR and CR image plates. CR radiography, otherwise known as computed radiography, with CR radiography, the digital image is generated using a phosphor plate. Phosphor plates have no cables for ease of positioning and they are inexpensive if happened to be damaged or lost. We must, however, be careful not to dispose of these image plates at the end of a dental procedure because they're not single use. IM3 offers the largest range of plate sizes for veterinary dentistry and small animal extremity applications. Our plates are available in sizes 0 to 5 and they have a really rapid processing time of approximately less than 8 seconds for a size 2 plate. The size 5 high resolution image plate is unique to the CR7 processor and when we combine this with our positioning kit it allows full mouth acquisition in medium to large dogs in as little as 6 views. By using our positioning kit and size 5 plate, you are unlikely to miss teeth and therefore you won't need to retake images. This in turn results in less radiation exposure, exposure to our patients and therefore shorter anaesthetic times. In addition to these plates, we also have high resolution rabbit specific plates for intraoral imaging. Best practice is to take full mouth x-rays for all patients undergoing a dental procedure. The CR Vet provides unsurpassed high resolution dental images and uses veterinary dental specific software. As it's nice and compact, it sits perfectly next to a computer or laptop in your dental area or suite. The software can also be networked across 10 PCs in your practice. I often get asked the question in practice of how long the phosphor plates will last, but this really does depend on how well we look after them. We need to clean the plates with these IP cleaning wipes and this will remove any debris on the plate. Any blood or debris on the plate will result in artefacts on the processed image. We must always handle the plates by the very edge and use a new protective sheath for each exposure and a plate protector pre to prevent the plate from being chewed. Badly damaged plates should be replaced. However, they are relatively inexpensive in comparison to replacing a DR sensor. A new plate is approximately £150, where a new DR sensor would be several thousand pounds. Always pop the dust protector back on the CR7 processor when it's not in use and clean and disinfect the input unit regularly. Now I'm going to discuss DR radiography. DR radiography is direct digital radiography 
and it consists of a small size 2 thick and rigid sensor that is attached by a wire to your computer or laptop via a USB connection port. Once the sensor has been exposed to radiation, a digital image will automatically appear on your computer screen. The DR sensor has a rapid processing time of approximately 3 seconds. You don't need to remove the sensor from the patient's mouth for processing, so appropriate adjustments can be made if the image needs to be reacquired. However, my personal opinion, I feel that the sensor is too small for x-raying medium to large dogs, as although the acquisition time is quicker than the CR, to take a full mouth x-ray in a larger dog requires multiple images. Sometimes as many as 24 images might be necessary. The sensor itself is the most expensive part of the DR package. So as this is placed in the patient's mouth, it has a risk of being damaged from a reflex bite. We must always check the anaesthetic depth, reflexes and jaw tone before placing the sensor into the patient's mouth. Care also needs to be taken not to drop or mishandle the sensor because as we mentioned in the previous slides, they are very expensive. The sensor needs to be placed in a clear plastic contamination barrier sleeve to protect it from blood and debris. And it's very important to disinfect the sensor between procedures using the correct disinfectant and contact time. Here are the ordering codes for the items mentioned in this presentation. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you have any questions after watching this presentation, please leave them below and we'll answer them for you. If you would like to watch more webinars or videos, then please go to the IM3 website for your local region and visit the IM3 education section by following one of the links based on your location. From here, please follow the instructions to set up a free account and then simply log in to access the content from there. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.